Auburn's winning 21-16. You're driving. You are on Oklahoma's 40-yard line. It's third and six. I don't even know why you drop a pass play. And oh yeah, by the way, what about the offsides call and the onside kick against Minnesota? If some of y'all saw that onside kick, please let me know in the comment section, what do you think about it? Georgia! What happened? How to lose to Alabama? What happened? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope all of you had a great Saturday. Hope you all watched a ton of college football, and I hope you watched one of the greatest college football games of all time, and that is no other than Alabama versus Georgia. That game was legendary to say the least. It takes the cake, but today, well, you know what day it is. It's Sunday, and that means it's time for the week five recap. Outside of Alabama and Georgia, there wasn't a lot of top tier matchups going on. You did have some decent games lined up, but in my humble opinion, nothing too crazy, but it doesn't matter because we're still gonna talk about it. But guess what? We did have a big time upset with Kentucky going into Ole Miss's home stadium and beating them 2017. We're gonna talk all about that. Also the team that's ranked right behind Ole Miss at number seven, Miami, they didn't play on Saturday, but Friday night, they got extremely lucky, or I guess you'd say fortunate, to walk out of there with a win. Kansas State beat the absolute brakes off of Oklahoma State. I've told you since day one, Oklahoma State is not a top 25 team, and in reality, they're not that good. This was a game that I felt like didn't get talked about enough. USC and Wisconsin. Heading into that matchup, what I was looking forward to the most is can USC win the game and win it impressively over a team in which... They should beat. Notre Dame wound up beating Louisville 31-24. I'll talk a little bit about that, and you're going to want to see what I got to say about Notre Dame. I know it wasn't a top-tier matchup, but this is one of the games I was looking forward to the most on Saturday. Auburn and Oklahoma, and it turned out to be one of the best ones. This was an interesting game for multiple different reasons, but the main one heading into it is... You got two teams that don't know what they're doing at the quarterback position. And after the game, it still holds true for one team, but for the other team, not so much. Auburn blows an air game they should have won, and I can already feel it. We're going to talk a lot about that game in this video. What about this? The number one team in the country in Arch Manning. Well, they probably won't be number one when the new rankings come out, but for now, they're number one. They play Mississippi State. Did they look really good against Mississippi State, or does it look like they got some things they need to work on? Penn State took care of business, and there's a plethora of other things we're going to talk about. Strap in, buckle up, get you a snack, get you a popcorn, get your favorite meal you like to eat and watch a video, because trust me, I do the same thing, but all right, Matt, blah, blah, shut the crap up. Now that for that, too. Let's. Oh yeah, I need to throw this in there. This video is going to be uploaded late. I do apologize, but it's not really my fault. Having a ton of Wi-Fi issues. I really don't know why either. As most of you know, I do reside in Alabama. Maybe it has something to do with the hurricane because I know people in Georgia are having just power outages and internet issues. But the point is, this video is going to be uploaded late and I do apologize for that. The frustrating part about it is there's not really anything I can do with it, but I'm going to try my best to get it uploaded as quick as I can and edit it as quick as I can. Hope you guys understand, and let's get back into the video. Starting out things, not with our 11 a.m. games on Saturday, with a game on Friday night, Miami and Virginia Tech, and man oh man, where do you even begin? You know, we're going to talk about it, the final play. Before we get into that quite just yet, let's talk about what transpired before it. Virginia Tech and Miami, they're going back and forth in the first half, and right before halftime, Virginia Tech's kicker drains a dang near 60-yard field goal. That extended their lead from 21 to 14 to 24 to 14. It was looking like Virginia Tech was going to take a 10-point lead, a double-digit point lead over Miami. But just like Lee Corso says, not so fast, my friend, because there's only like 18 seconds to go in the half. Virginia Tech, they wind up squibbing a kick. Didn't work out. Miami returns it to the 50-yard line. One pass interference call, and Miami, they're in field goal range. But it wasn't a chip shot either. I think that one was either like a 56, 57-yarder. And Miami's kicker... Says, all right, hold my beer. I got one better for you and drains one right back. That was cool to see, especially from college kickers because that's not normal. And then right out of half, Virginia Tech, their kicker drains another 50-plus yard field goal. And then the turning point in the game happened. Miami's driving. Cam Ward throws an interception almost in the end zone. And Virginia Tech returns it to the 15-yard line. Quarterback throws a pass to a wide-open receiver. He probably should have caught it. It was a little low, but he drops it. Next couple plays don't really do anything. And Virginia Tech is lining up for a field goal, and it's fourth and three. Up 10, by the way, in the third quarter. And this coach draws up a fake field goal. Of course, he doesn't get it. And we talked a little bit about this in the reaction video, but... That is one of the worst play calls I've ever seen. I'd rather you just straight up go for it with your offense out there than do some BS fake field goal. But the main reason I hate it is because if you're trailing by 10, no, I'm not mad at it. 
but you're up by 10 and you're already chasing points? What are we doing? When your defense makes a huge play against Cam Ward, who hasn't made many mistakes this season, you got to walk out of there with points. I get it. You wanted a touchdown. But that was just being greedy. I can't get over that, and I don't want to sit up here and rant and rave about it because I think all of you are in the same boat as me. It was a dumb decision. And I'm not just saying that because I didn't get it. Even though I would have got it, I'd have been like, yeah, that was just terrible. And what do you know? The fake field goal came back to bite him in the butt. When Virginia Tech was driving at the end of the game, if they would have had that field goal, which was an easy chip shot for a guy who just hit a 250 yarders, that would have meant... Virginia Tech could have kicked another field goal to win it. Because remember, they were down by four, which means they needed a touchdown. And if they had that field goal, it would have been 38-37. Field goal wins it. But now, well, the field goal doesn't do anything. And oh, yeah, you thought I was going to forget to talk about this. What about the clock management at the end of the game on that final drive? What are you doing? That was a coaching disaster. They got two timeouts. They're not using them. Getting tackled in bounds. Still not using them. I'm getting mad just thinking about it again. And last but not least, the most controversial play out of this game, they throw up the Hail Mary and it's a touchdown. It took like, what was it? One to two minutes for the refs to decide it was a touchdown because originally Miami thought it was incomplete. I remember the stadium. They turned off the lights. Miami celebrating. And then the announcer's like, oh, they called it a touchdown. Then Virginia Tech celebrating. It was a whole mess. Obviously, we knew they was going to review it. And that review, no lie, I think it took 12 to 15 minutes. That was one of the longest reviews I've ever seen. And more times than not, when a review is that long, you do not overturn it. And here's my take on it. There was not enough indisputable video evidence to overturn that. If I were to make an original call on it, I would say, nope, incomplete pass. As much as I wanted to see a crazy Hail Mary... I just have to call things for how I see it. He never really had firm control. It didn't look like, and he was bobbling it, and plus there was a guy out of bounds who touched it. So I would say incomplete. But, and I have a really big but, you better believe this, I also believe whatever you called on the field, the first call you made, there's no way you can overturn that. And I know what you're saying. Well, Matt, you said if you had to call it for yourself, you'd say it's incomplete. Yes, that would be my first decision. But once you call that a touchdown, to overturn that, you have to be 100% sure. There's no way you was 100% sure that it wasn't a touchdown. There's no way. You might be 90% sure, but not 100. And especially when it takes 10 minutes long. Let's talk about that. If it takes you 10 minutes trying to decipher whether or not it's a touchdown, you're not sure. I'm going to end it off with this. I don't know how you overturn that, but if you really want to get into, I guess this is like conspiracy theory land, it does make sense. Because come on, guys. What's more beneficial for the sorry and sucky ACC? For 2-2 two and two Virginia Tech to win a game or undefeated Miami to win a game? The last thing you wanted in this matchup was for Virginia Tech to upset Miami. Am I saying the higher-ups at the ACC had something to do with this? Well, no. I didn't say that. I'm just saying, do as you please with that information. What's more beneficial for the conference? I would love to talk about that some more, but we had to get a move on to our 11 a.m. games on Saturday. And man, oh man, we started things out hot with Kentucky and Ole Miss. I thought Kentucky would play them hard and close, but I thought that ultimately Ole Miss's offense would pull away at the end. But they didn't. Give credit to Kentucky, and I now think the conversation shouldn't be, oh, well, Ole Miss, they suck because they struggle with Kentucky. No, because remember, Kentucky played Georgia close, and they dang near won that one. I think the new conversation should be, well, dang, Kentucky, yeah, they may not be a great team, but they're a solid team. I said that after the Georgia game. People call me crazy, but here we are. They just went into Ole Miss and beat them. I think the right takeaway from this game should be Ole Miss isn't as good as we thought they were, and Kentucky's better than what we thought they were or what we've been giving them credit for. And the funny thing is, Kentucky didn't play out of their minds. They just didn't make a mistake. Same thing for Jackson Dart. He didn't play bad by any stretch of imagination. You can say he played good, maybe. But when Kentucky needed to get stops, they did. They held Ole Miss 1 for 10 on third downs. 1 for 10. It comes down to this. Timely plays, and at the end of the game, Kentucky, the ball bounced their way. They got that touchdown, and that's why they won. It also helps that Ole Miss's kicker shanked that one at the end and missed. Big win for Kentucky. Ole Miss fans, I wouldn't hang my head too low. You still got a good ball club. You're probably just, like I said earlier, not as good as you think. Michigan, what about that? Oh, Alex Orgy, he tried to throw it away, but he didn't. They walk out of there with a 27-24 win. I don't really have too much to say there. Do you really want me to get up here and tell you again that Alex Orgy can't throw the football? You know that. And Oh yeah, by the way, what about the offsides call and the onside kick against Minnesota? 
That was a bummer, and there's not too much more to say than the refs completely screwed him over. If some of y'all saw that onside kick, please let me know in the comment section, what do you think about it? And the way the game was flowing, Minnesota, they had the momentum, so that would have been huge if they would have got that. K-State, Oklahoma State, I don't really take this game too serious because... Oklahoma State, they're not that good. Congrats to Kansas State, I guess, but I just view that as them taking care of business. This was a game I was looking forward to. USC and Wisconsin. USC walks out of there with a 38-21 win. I think the score is deceiving because USC kind of ran away with it at the end. But I'm going to remind some of y'all, Wisconsin was leading this game by double digits. It just got to the point where Wisconsin couldn't keep up and they couldn't hold Miller Moss down for too long. And Wisconsin did some good things. They had good drives and they had a decent shot of winning the game. It just came down to their defense wore down over time and their offense couldn't keep scoring. And that's going to be the remedy for Wisconsin this entire season. They're not built to win games that get into the 30s. I was happy for USC because this was one of those games, it's almost like a trap game. You know you're supposed to win, you got the better team, better quarterback, but can you go out there and do it? And they did it. Happy for USC there. Notre Dame and Louisville, I told you in the intro, you got to see what I'm going to say about Notre Dame, but I'm going to keep it short and simple. Do not care, they're irrelevant. I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. I'm not talking about irrelevant football teams. You needed to beat Louisville by 40 if you wanted a shot to get into a playoff. Winning by seven, not good enough. Riley Leonard finally played like I thought he might play at the beginning of the season, but all too little, all too late. You lost to Northern Illinois. Your season's over, buddy. Let's get into a really interesting game. Oklahoma and Auburn. Whew. If Okay. I say if you miss the Alabama-Georgia game, you missed out, but you also missed out if you missed this one. This was a barn burner, and Auburn had this game, and they threw it away, literally. Peyton Thorne, what are you doing, buddy? Like I was telling my neighbor, he's an Auburn fan, by the way, Peyton Thorne strikes again. Are you really shocked that Peyton Thorne threw a game-losing interception? Why, well, I'll leave you with this. You shouldn't be. Oklahoma didn't win this game. Auburn lost it, and I've seen some Oklahoma fans say, oh, but we didn't have our receivers. I don't care. It doesn't matter. You didn't play good in this game. Your defense was fine, but it's not saying much when you're playing up against Auburn and Peyton Thorne. They have a terrible offense. I just can't believe they squandered this game away. And it's really unfortunate I have to talk bad about Peyton Thorne again because if he wouldn't have thrown the interception, I'd have been talking good about him. I'll show you his numbers. 12-32, 338 passing yards, three touchdowns. That's great, but the one interception just destroys it all because... It's what lost you the game. And originally, I took up for Hugh Freeze when he got a lot of heat for saying, we got to find a guy, and referring to a quarterback, that won't throw the other team the ball. People hated him for that, and they criticized him because they viewed it as him throwing the quarterbacks under the bus, but I didn't see it that way. I saw it as a coach not giving you coach shock and living in reality. Let me ask you a question. Is it Hugh Freeze's fault his quarterbacks don't make good throws? No. Your job as a head coach is to put your players in the best position possible to succeed. However, with that being said, he didn't do that Saturday. Auburn's winning 21-16. You're driving. You are on Oklahoma's 40-yard line. It's third and six. I don't even know why you drop a pass play. And I know some of you may say, well, man, it's third and six. If you run it, you may not get it. That's fine. Punt it. Make Oklahoma with a true freshman quarterback on the road in the SEC go 90 yards down the field, and he can't even get a field goal. He's got to get a touchdown. Make him do that. And if Michael Hawkins Jr. goes 90 yards down the field and gets a touchdown, you tip your cap to him and say, yep, he beat us. But you didn't do that. Instead, you let Peyton Thorne do what Peyton Thorne does. If it was third and six and you had Jalen Milrow, Shadur Sanders, Cam Ward, a capable quarterback back there? Yeah, draw up a passing play. That one's on Hugh Freeze, but yet again, it comes back to this. Did Hugh Freeze throw it right to the defender? No, but he did draw up a passing play. What a terrible time to be an Auburn fan. And the sad part about it is Auburn's not a bad football team. They just have bad quarterback play. If they had a decent quarterback, they'd be 5-0. Crazy times, man. Crazy times. A&M, they get past Arkansas. Not too much to say there. That's always a close game. But shout out to A&M, they get a dub. Texas and Arch Manning, they don't dominate Mississippi State. And that kind of shocks some people. At halftime, Texas was only up by, what was it? Touchdown? Arch Manning did fine. I don't really think too much of Texas only winning by 20 because that's just kind of how the game was flowing. Texas had some miscues during the games where if they would have executed a little bit better, they would have won by more. But 20-point win in the SEC, eh, I ain't got much to hate on. I just don't feel like nitpicking Texas for this game. That's just me. Illinois-Penn State, not too much to say here. Penn State, they always win the games they're supposed to win. It's just against Michigan and Ohio State, the teams they're not supposed to beat. I can't beat them. I mean, come on now. This is your stereotypical sorry and sucky Big Ten game. 21-7. to You can't make it up. If I would have told you midweek Penn State's going to win 21-7 to 
you just said, oh, yeah, that sounds like a Big Ten game. And it's nothing against the Big Ten. That's just how they play football. Congratulations to Penn State on the win. And I tell you this much, that Penn State defense impressed me because Luke Altmaier, he was having a heck of a season. Holding Illinois to only 219 total yards, yeah, that's impressive. And if you're a Penn State fan, I know we got a couple out there, you should take that highly because when's the last time I ever said anything good about Penn State? It's been a while. Penn State's offense isn't anything special. Drew Hours not anything special. But that defense, they might carry them this year. But yet again, I go back to this. I do not take Penn State serious. They're irrelevant until they beat Michigan or Ohio State or both. Who knows? You want to be talked about more in these previews and recaps? It's as simple as this. Beat some big time teams. Boise State. I'm not here to talk about the team. I'm here to talk about one individual. And you know who. I don't even got to say his name. That dude's a monster. I don't even have a good comparison because he doesn't necessarily remind me of anyone. He's just a monster. He keeps having performances like that. He's going to win the Heisman Trophy. What about this? Utah loses to Arizona? I'm not all too shocked by that. Just due to the fact Utah, well, they don't have their quarterback in Cam Rising. But a lot of people are high on Utah this year and Arizona beats them in somewhat of a slug fest 23-10. Oregon takes care of business against UCLA and Alabama and Georgia. I'm not going to talk about them a lot in this video. Just due to the fact... I made a 40 minute video on the game last night. So if you want to know my thoughts, you can go watch that one. And I talked about them earlier today. And I'll tell you this much if you haven't seen those videos and you don't feel like checking them out, there's a lot to it. Congratulations to Alabama fans for winning the game. Georgia, well, you can't get over the Alabama kryptonite. It's as simple as that. You can't beat these guys. I think Georgia in the last 48 games is 45 and three. Their last three losses have been to Alabama, Alabama, and oh, who's the other team? Oh yeah, Alabama. They can't beat these guys. The first half was awful. It was abysmal. Second half, they turned it on a little bit, but that was also due to the fact Alabama took their foot off the gas and really got lucky at the end. They have one of the best players in the nation or two of the best players that made a huge play in Ryan Williams and Jalen Milrow. And their defense did get a clutch stop at the end with the interception in the end zone. But the bottom line is Georgia just, they got completely dominated in the first half. And when you're down by 28, I don't care if you're playing one of the worst teams in the nation. It's going to be hard to come back and win. You got to play perfect. And they almost did it in the second half. Give credit to Georgia, man. Their defense got stops in the second half and their offense finally started clicking a little bit. But ultimately, Ryan Williams comes to save the day with arguably one of the greatest plays you're ever going to see in college football history. I know that's insane to say, but when you're talking about just the play itself and the moment in the game, it's got to be up there. That's going to be a play Alabama fans and Georgia fans are going to remember for at least 30, 40 years. Congratulations, Alabama there. If you want more information on that, go watch some of the previous videos. And last but not least, I say the best for last. Don't think I forgot about y'all. Colorado, they destroy UCF. I know that was a 2.30 game, but I wanted to save it for last because, you know, it's Colorado. Holy crap. For those of you who don't know, UCF was a 15-point favorite, and Colorado won 47-21. to Oh, wait, my apologies. I said 47. It was 48-21. I'm shocked. I did pick UCF to win this game by three points, so I thought it was going to be close, but... Colorado winning by that much? That's insane. UCF couldn't do anything on offense, couldn't do anything on defense. This was just a good old-fashioned butt whooping. Congratulations to Colorado. They proved me wrong, and they are sitting at a very impressive and pretty 4-1. How about that? I have been giving them an extremely hard time, but they have done nothing but made me eat my words this entire season. And I can't believe these words are coming out of my mouth. I said it yesterday. I'm going to say it again. They look good. Will this trend continue? I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But as of where it stands right now, you got to get credit where it's due. And I tell you this much, it really benefits them that they play in a conference that's not all too hot. Go look at their schedule and look at the Big 12. It ain't that good. I'm not using that as a knock against Colorado. I'm just telling you, because if Colorado's in the SEC, this is common knowledge, they go 4-8 and eight guaranteed. But in the Big 12... They might win eight, nine games this year. It's not crazy to say, guys, they're already four and one. They only need four or five more to go. Who knows what's going to happen there? I don't even want to use this as an oh, UCF's not that good video because it's kind of like disrespectful to Colorado. And since I haven't been giving them the respect they deserve, I'll just do it now. Big win in Colorado. That's all I'm going to say there. And yeah. That's all there is, guys. What a weekend it was. Some really good games going on, and it capped off at one of the greatest games you're going to see with Alabama and Georgia. Hope you guys had fun and a great time watching football this weekend. Also, I'm curious. Let me know your thoughts and all this down below. But, uh, Robin!